Hello there, here and we are back with veins like tape worms. Chapter 2 God in the Gutter. So, yeah, we are continuing playing the game already. If you haven't watched the previous episode, which you should already have, what are you doing here if you haven't? <laughs> uh, I don't know what else to say, yeah. Let's continue playing the game, shall we? I, I really enjoy playing this game so far, it's a nice experience. Ever since they were little, Damien has always dreamt in red. Ooh, interesting. Are you Damien? Red is a beautiful, meaningful color. How so? It is loud, angry even. But it is unapologetic and passionate. It is the color of blood and hate. But also the color, color of love and desire. When they were growing up, there wasn't much love to go around. Oh. Yeah. They dream of their family always screaming at one another or at a small child who couldn't fight back. In these dreams, they are never called Damien. A name that hasn't been used in years is what rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Past anger drips red from his teeth like venom from a snake fangs as he yells in that booming voice of his. Mas knife is splashed with red one day when the screeching reaches a crescendo and Pa puts his hand on her throat. And of course, their tongues will be stained with hatred when their ire turns towards the sole child in the family. As a child, the men couldn't explain why they hated being in their own skin. When they dream of their face, they see a reflection of a kid who wanted to go to the beach so badly but couldn't send the idea of their swimsuit. A child who wanted to bite all their skin off in hopes they were just in a cocoon that housed their real self. Yeah, Damien. But this isn't a shell, and there's no gorgeous butterfly waiting to emerge. Desires in a language they don't understand bust an itch under their awful face. When bitter sobs bruise their ribs, the tears are red. Yeah. And now they dream of blood filling their lungs and spilling through their lips. Is it a dream though? Yeah. Thought so. W wait, am I recording? I'm recording right. I'm Yeah, yeah. Wait. No. It it's not blood and their body isn't trying to expel it. Oh, ho ho ho. ho. Interesting. It's an infection. And in the dream, their body welcomes it. Their mind screams to purge it, but a sack of meat and bones doesn't listen. Every fiber of them is warped and distorted, overwhelmed by the parasite as it settles deep in their chest. They try to cry out, but their voice is no longer their own. Interesting. From the look in their eye to, their, to the twitch of their fingers, this monster bleeds every drop of demon's soul out and settles comfortably inside their shell. They dream of their flesh becoming nothing more than a fertilizer for invasive weeds, with scarlet flowers and falling toxic petals around their skin. Bloom. Am I right? An eyeball that used to belong to them bursts and demon awakens with a start. Wakey wakey, Damien. It's time for another day. It's incredibly late at night or early in the morning, depending on their, their perspective. They even sit up slowly. It feels like there's a razor blades in their skull, sliding around and slicing up bits and pieces of their brain. Str struggling to lift an arm, Damien drags a hand down their face. Sleep doesn't come easy to Damien these days. Well, it never has been easy, but they've graduated to a full-on insomniac in the past year or so. <laughs> Congratulations on your graduation! <laughs> oh, oh no. They're lucky if they get a few hours of sleep every day. Of course, they may know full well that this is partially their own fault. Oh, it's, it's not your own fault. It, it isn't. If they actually work a normal schedule instead of taking every slot available to get out of this shithole and stop scrolling through their phone for hours at night, who knows? Wow. Okay. Maybe the bags under their eyes wouldn't be so dark. Hey! Look! 
Okay, fine. Nothing changed, it seems. Despite everything, it's still you. Stuff. Blurry eyes grace at glare the alarm clock on the nightstand. The display reads 4.33 a.m. in bright red. Oh, that's just great. Like it's not already hard enough to sleep. A red skitters across the carpet. Ugly bastard too with a scar across his left eye. <laughs> oh no. Demon makes the motion to get rid of him. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a beautiful little fella. Gentleman. They sure don't feel like they slept for three hours straight. Demon flops down on the pillow and stares directly upwards. Their entire stay here, Demon has never been able to figure out how the hell someone got coffee stains on the popcorn ceiling. Okay, uh, pause for a moment. I'm gonna check my recording if it's actually recording properly, unlike last time. So yeah, bingo, BRB. Okay, everything seems fine in the recording check, so let's continue, shall we? How did they get to bed anyway? Last day many members, they've been grabbing some cheese curls in the vending machine outside when... When what, Damien? I love it, I love the... Reaction... <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Damien throws the shits off their legs and sprints to the bathroom. Something's wrong. Something is inside them. And they need to get it out, somehow. How? They don't know. God, frantic thugs pour through their mind again and again. Why did they do this to themselves? God, dumbass, just couldn't resist the noises that some alien vomit slime creature made her. <laughs> yeah. Ice burning in the sudden light, Damon looks out for, the, out for themselves countless times. You know, like, you know how it is. It's hard to resist um, a toxic alien slime just in the trash there. It's, it's very hard to resist that. There's nothing wrong with their limbs physically. No twisted gnarled claws to replace their nails. No thorns bursting from their skin. The only difference they mean can see is their left hand. The abrasion has completely healed over. There isn't even a scar where the cut should be. Cut? Abrasion? What happens to you, Damien? Everything looks fine. Not a single monstrous distortion of their body. A twinge of regret prods their chest at this. Damien figure it's a good idea to push aside the implication of that for now. There's just one last thing. And that is, is it, is it like a huge obvious thing? Peeling the tape from the edge of the trash bag, Demon still their nerves. There's going to be nothing wrong with them. Their face will be unchanged. Fortunately or unfortunately. Just one little pick is all they need to assure themselves. They're a grown-ass guy. They can look at their reflection without getting this far away. Shaking hand and cover their mirror. Ah. The mirror is in the trash bag, huh? Or maybe it's not. Oh. Yeah, if it's... That's a very interesting design. Yeah. They're fine. Their face looks the same as it always says. Yeah. See, I, I love this. I, lo I love... Shit, I dropped something from my table. I don't know what it is, but it's gone forever. Bye. It has been claimed by the... Gnome of the Underland, of the Underdesk. Uh, but yeah, where was I? I love this. It's a simple way to. It's an artist artistic way to convey dysphoria, and I love it. They don't like it, but it's there. With any luck, they think while letting go of the tarp last night was just a feverish byproduct of an exhausted mind. Wait, so what's about the trash? I thought the mirror was in the trash. For better or worse, the meaning is completely unchanged. Or maybe it's a metaphor for the mirror. Because, you know, you don't like your face, so it's a garbage. I don't know. But you have a change in ways you cannot see. That's the meaning on a voice. Oh, interesting. Now you can see the reflection. 
they will run to face the mirror again. The trash bag is no longer a protective shield against an uncomfortable image. Instead, a curtain to yank away and reveal something much stranger. The reflection lulls its head to the right. A dull smile curls its lips. There you are, it says in Damien's own voice. I can do much right now while you sleep, you know. Damien blinks. They blink again. One more time. Rub their eyes. And one final blink just to be sure. <laughs> the response is simple. What the fuck? <laughs> Am I dreaming? Who are you? <laughs> okay, if what the fuck feels appropriate. Wh what the fuck? Yeah, they're thinking this about as well as anyone could expect. The reflection scoffs. Yeah, I guess if I simply fell upon you without your knowledge, you let me in. You listen and you reach out. I simply reach back and close the gap between us. Is it that thing? It lives with on its own body shifting and adjusting out of free will. The reflection leans forward, its elbow on the cracked ceramic. It means a spoon. I know what you are thinking. It says with a dual trill in the black of its throat. I hear the whispering thugs in the forefront of your brain, yes. I am the one who called to you in the snowstorm. And you are the one who answered me. You are not real. What do you mean you hear my thugs? Hang on. That didn't sound right. It takes a good second for Damien to work their next question. It feels like one slip of the tongue will be the equivalent of a landmine. Damien's tone is wary as they ask. What do you mean you hear my thugs? And you know, we share a body now, you and me. There's no mockery in his voice. Amusement, yes, but our reflection hasn't spoken in a taunting manner. Our minds are connected now. My mind is yours, and yours is mine. Initial gut reaction confirmed that, yes, I've mentioned identity erosion is still a terrifying concept to Damien. It clicks its tongue, shaking its head at Damien's hesitation. Oh, don't be afraid. My form is unraveled to, it, to its faintest trace. I can do much of anything without your permission. For now, anyway. What does that mean? Without the embrace of a human, I cannot bloom to my full potential. So, are you saying you're, you're eventually going to take over our body? Damien's body? Huh? You, did, did you just reveal the horrible downside of this? Wait, wh what's the upside of this anyway, other than having a companion <laughs> for making a decision? So, you need me is what you're saying? Yes, that is right. I need you, and you need me. Ah, here comes the bargaining. What do you offer? A thousand things the men could say is worm through their head. Hey, there's a literal worm, you could say. Eventually, they settle on one. Uh, sorry, I need to cough. Okay, yeah, that feels better. Let's go shall we? A thousand things the men could say worm through their head. Eventually, they settle on one. What happened to you? What is blooming? What is this? Blooming thing? It's brought up blo blooming, blooming a lot in the whole conversation. The main figures they made as well know what it is before they get too far in. More importantly, the question of is blooming going to kill me is an answer. That's very smart. Then again, it could always lie. The men wouldn't know either way. When I am fully rebuilt and can reach for the gifts of a god, then I can bloom. Demon scratches their face up. That doesn't sound like a good sign. It laughs and leans in. I know what you are thinking. The answer is no, it will not kill you. Blooming is a wonderful feeling in fact. If you could reach out and touch the heavens for eternity, the bliss you feel would be nothing compared to when I bloom. Uh, that's a very... Very culty thing you were saying there. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. Well, what is this? What does what does that mean? This is raising a lot of flags. Is it going to harm me in any way? Are you going to use my body as a fucking plant food or something? 
Um, they could like say it will then harm you, which maybe they're right. It technically wouldn't harm you if you like doesn't feel anything anymore, right? <laughs> it's like dealing with a genie. One wrong word, and I'm turning into a toad or something because I want to jump higher. Don't be so skeptical, friend. I have no intention of hurting you in any way. After all, our pain is shared now. Your agony is mine, and my suffering is yours. I can only bloom with the living and conscious host at the peak of their physical condition. Can you explain what happened with the girl back then? This statement nestled itself comfortably in front of Demon's mind. If we want to be partnered, then each of us has to be truthful to each other, right? So, to bloom you need me. Yes, I do. Hum. Demon tilts their head and asks the burning question. So, I'm in control here... What if I died? I don't know about that, Damien. I don't know whether or not you're in control here. What if you die? What if I die? It's a bizarre question to ask. Even Damien themselves realize in the moment it... Sorry, realize it the moment the world escaped their lips. Can they get back though? Damien needs to come in. What do you mean by that? It's certainly a mixture of amusement and befuddlement. <laughs> I feel so. I could kick the bucket in days in the slums if I'm unlucky. I mean, not to be a bit of a downer, but... I don't really live in the rich folks part of Kingsfield. People leave their cars doors unlocked here because it's easier to replace anything stolen than it is to fix a broken window. Wow. It really is the truth, not just a scare tactic. Damien used to have a decent watch they bought with- No. With summer job funds, it was one of the few things they could take from their parents' house before the unceremonious departure. In the end though, they decided losing a $40 watch was better than dying in the alleyway between the quick stop shop and Jerry's daughter kebabs. No, not Jerry's daughter kebabs. Hey, wait a minute. I have like- I have a little joke. Why do they gave away- Kebab at a charity because it's a donor kebab. Ha ha ha. I fucking hate myself for that. Uh, anyway, yeah. It's better to lose a $40 watch rather than becoming someone else's reason to become a Batman. They check it at a knife wielding mugger and sprinter. They check there to clear their thugs. Nice crying crying over spilled meat. Milk, the saying goes. What about spilled pill? Hmm? Yeah, I would cry if my pill getting spilled, you know? So what happens if I die or I get close to death? You just... What? Live? Find someone else? That's a question you won't need an answer to. Huh. Dude, that doesn't mean anything. Uh-huh. Yeah? Well, what does it mean? You all understand once I've rebuilt myself a little. All you need to know is that you are safe in my hands. Okay, but what about other people? Are other people safe in our hands? Sounds like crypting sayings are all it knows how to speak with. Yep. <laughs> you know, your personality is very interesting. Or it can be perfectly clear when it wants to. Maybe it just likes leaving the in with more questions and answers. I'll tell you what, the reflection says. Since you are so worried about your untimely de death within these rotten grounds, I will extend myself to you, just as you protect me with your bones and blood. I will protect you with my vines and petals. Damien wishes they, they knew how to respond. Um, uh, thanks? I uh, guess that makes this whole thing about sharing a body not as bad. I don't know, I've never been through something like this before. Yeah, it's getting awkward referring to this parasite as just Damien's reflection. Unwilling but or not, it's still a living thing with an identity of its own. And calling it their reflection sounds weird too. Damien can kind of glean that the, they only perceive it as their mirror image because that's easiest for their brain to wrap around. Something like that anyway. Hey, Damien asks, do you have a name? I used to. Over my eons in oblivion, though, it has eroded from me. Can you change someone's face? That's an interesting question, right? Especially for you, Damien. You want to change, and I'm happy if you can. 
I'm I'm truly I'm truly are. Oh. They look away. Do you want me to give you one? You don't have to say yes or uh, make it your whole identity if you don't want it. <laughs> Could be just a nickname or something. Yeah, you know, you you see something. Whatever makes you most comfortable. How about slice with Y? You know, to be cool. <laughs> to be cool. Okay, sure. I mean, what do you feel, you slicey wormy? Wait, no, that's edgy. I'm supposed to be out of my edgy face, but you're right. Uh, okay, I'm coughing again, BRP. Okay, I'm feeling better now. As I said, I'm still a little bit sick, but it's not as much worse as before. It flows well, slices. I mean, what's wrong with being edgy? Edgy fun. Edgy is fun, you know? Inflicting as much psychic damage as possible to other people is fun. <laughs> I like it. You sure? Yes. Alright, Slice it is. Slice smells wetter than it has during their entire conversation. Then I hope we will get along well, you and I. Demon can help but feel like they can't deal with a god in the gutter. As if on cue, the landline phone in the main room blares its distressing tones. They jolt and whip their head around to face the bathroom entrance. Do -do -do -do. Shit, that's probably Carl or Margaret, they think. What do this fucker wants now? At this hour? They might expect to give Slice a goodbye. All they see now is their own things. Fuck it. Sharing a body with an alien person can win. Right now they've got a more pressing matters on their hands. A job? Is it is okay. They pick up the phone and do their best to sound like they haven't been on up for half an hour already. Zao speaking. Hey, Demon, it's Margaret. Margaret, wh why are you calling uh, us in like, I don't know, 4 a.m.? Dude, it's 5 in the morning. I work second and third shifts. I know, I know, but our morning housekeeper Isaac just called out and we don't have anyone else to fill his slot, so... Tell Isaac to go stuff it, stuff it and get his ass in here. Come on, Maggie, please. I'm exhausted. Look at my schedule. I'm supposed to be on second with overtime today. They been sticking this slicing awfully well, if, if they do say so themselves. They've gotten pretty decent at packing away trauma in their brain to sort through later. <laughs> it reminds them of shipping their summer wardrobe into neat little boxes to get enough space for winter gear. Problem is, this kind of goes beyond trauma and into life threatening events that anyone will panic over, but yeah. Not really something they can stuff into the mental closet to deal with on a better day. No, 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 it's a fine. Let's just stuff it in the mental closet and deal it in a better day, shall we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, we, we are built different. We can take this. YOLO. You only live... Oh, uh, once. And hey, maybe they're imagining it size up. At any point, they could wake up severely ill next to the model dumpster, covered in snow and two seconds away from death because they ate a good <laughs> good is click by their intestine in real time. Intestines. That's also a possibility. Look, I... Demon, you know I never want to do this to you, but we really, really need someone to fill in and clean up before... You know what? I'll... I'm... I can help with that, okay? We can probably get Samuel or someone to take your, your other shift today. We just really need you on this. Oh, so Samuel can take another shift, but you need me for this one. I see what you're doing. Y yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, thank you so much. I'll talk to that right now, alright? Alright. Margaret slams the phone down on her side. Someone's killed me already. <laughs> do, 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 do you want to die now? F fine. It whispers to the midsman again. Could never harm you. Were you just like considering trying to kill me, but no, because you could uh, considering killing us, but you couldn't because like the promise, huh? Save with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can bloom it at house. Don't wanna risk and try someone else. I'll take. It will take a while to get used to having two voices in your head. If this were a horror movie, they may think they'd be first to die. 
Yeah, they will be the token minority who thinks this is a cute rom-com cottage in the forest can do it. Oh wow, okay. They blissfully skip their way down the creek stairs and into the cluttered basement without so much as a flashlight. And oh, oops! There goes their head! Chained out of by a slasher before the men can make it down the last step. They are not final girl material. They are too stupid for that slow. <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, some final girl people are also kind of silly, you know, so it's fine. For example, I recently watched Evil Dead and I kind of love it. Like Evil, the Evil, uh, no, no, not the Evil Dead. I recently watched Evil Dead 2 and uh, Army of Darkness and I kind of love it. I, I'm still halfway through Army of Darkness. I probably will finish it later. And yeah, I also... It, it's just show off silly protagonists, you know? Although, yeah, it's kind of weird sometimes, but... It, 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 you know, final girl material doesn't need to be smart. Sometimes you just need to be really silly and everything goes along your way. <laughs> Damien isn't even a girl, and they just a piece. Oh. Damien, come on. The beast in their cornflakes. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. But this ain't a nice spring break. There's no splinter filled cabin in the heart of the woods. No serial killer that wasn't hog enough as a kid, so now he skins people for fun. <laughs> Bruh. And this isn't a horror movie. This is real life, and Demon has to clock in at 7 a.m., running off three hours of sleep, and pretend they don't have a vomit alien wrapped around their ribs. And that's fantastic. Interesting. Morning, Sam. Margaret. Hey, have you seen Damien? Oh, they're cleaning one of the, the rooms, then bother him. What is happening? Wow, another? Yeah, Carl's not too happy about it, but the corpse last week put them in a clean freak mood. Um, I didn't blame them. Don't take this as a fact or anything, but I think dealing with all that fuck with fuck with their head, like, a lot more than they want to admit. No shit, that thing was rotten when they found it. No, seriously, I know they're acting like it's all water under the bridge, but Damien's just kind of been different ever since. I don't know how, but something's changed. Uh-huh. I don't know, I... I think I'm sinking too deep into stuff. I wish Damien would just... talk to someone, or say something. I wish I knew what was going on in their head. Leave them alone. Maybe they just don't want to talk about personal stuff at work. Maybe. Maybe indeed. What do you want me to do? Wait, what? Oh, end of demo. Thank you for playing the demo of Vince like to... Like, they, what the hell is that? I, th I don't think that's supposed to show up there. <laughs> the full version will have 8 chapters, 6 endings, 7 bonus scenes, and many more illustrations to unlock. Press enter, left click to return to the title screen. Wishlist the full game and seem everyone, every little bit helps. Yes, indeed. Wait, does it mean there are multiple endings for the game, or am I being silly? Right, right now in the demo, do we have like multiple endings, or what? Chapter 1, 2, and Ending 1 are available. Is that Ending 1? We didn't get any ending, so that's interesting. BRB, I'm gonna check a little bit. Alright. Okay, so I did some exploration, and I found out how to unlock the first ending. It's basically simple. Uh, as you can see... Yeah, as you can see, there's Ending 1 parallels already. But that's not what I'm about to do. We just need to go here. Right? Go inside here. And then we go back to this moment. And we skip forward, right? And we are closing in into the moment itself. Game is now that make it safe anyway. This part, <laughs> it's it, it's pretty easy to figure out. Like you you can immediately tell that this is probably the first ending. I didn't read any of it. I just like quickly skip and close my eyes, so I don't really know what happens. But yeah, look away. Yeah, no. I don't really know what happens, but I do know what. A little bit of what happens. Demon's not stupid. 
They're not dealing with whatever the hell she went through. Cryptic warnings are bad enough. DM and Ethan taking the chance of learning what letting it in means. Carl can take a gander tomorrow if he's so cute. <laughs> Fuck this. They shove their hands deep in their pockets and plot off to get their cheese curls. Wait, holy shit, you're telling me you didn't get your cheese curls back then if you let let him in? God damn it. The night drags on in the dual way. Truth be told, by the middle of tomorrow, Damien had completely forgotten their little, little encounter. The next time Damien thinks of it, a month has passed. They're stepping over the concept of Valentine's Day again with the TV plop on their dresser starts to speak of new serial care in the city. Oh no. They look up from their noodles and raise the volume. The reporter is a somber man about Damien's age. The fleeting wish of sitting in his spot glimmers in their head. Corps are cups are befuddled at the sight of the corpses. To be fair, Damien doesn't blame them. Oh. The state of the bodies was gruesome. Oh no. Far worse than local news report will be allowed to show up. Demon had to find the details online. Stomach flight open, organs devoured, arteries pulled up. It's gruesome, yes, but Demon can deny that it looks beautiful in a fuck it up kind of way. What? It reminds them of flower blooming with flesh and veins acting as petal and vines. Yeah, that's horrible. There's no rhyme or reason to the killings. It's like someone grew bored and started to race down whoever crossed path first. There is definitely a rhyme and rhythm to it. The question that's on the reporter mind is clear. Who could do something like this and why? Demon has the strangest feeling they know what happened. The question is on their own mind lingers for an uncomfortable while. What if that was me? Whoever the killer is, they sure seems to be living free and happy. Ah, I see. Will then that be something they say while shoving more shitty noodles down their throat? Yeah, I mean, I guess they are free and happy. I guess, but would you kill people for that? Damien? Interesting. Ending one parallels. Yeah. So yeah, we can save again in Parallels Ending. Yippee. Let's go back, shall we? Partial transcript of an interview between Sophia Choi and President Investigator Irving Altair, the Bardo has been discovered. Would you like to read it? Yes. There's just a bunch of minor dialogue in like the first chapter option, so I don't really explore it. Interview Irving Alter de Bartle. Interview with Sophia Choi, date and time February 17, redacted 15. Location redacted Nevada. Ah! There's a screenshot of that in the game page. I swear I didn't know you. You have to believe me. I didn't know it would bound to anyone else. I thought it was just me. Ah, uh, Miss Choi, please don't think for a second I'm placing any blame upon you. Truly I am not, Miss Choi. I called you here because, as the being's penultimate host, you will have vital information about it that could prove integral to my investigation. I really, really promise I didn't do it on purpose. I don't want to hurt anyone with, with it. I got rid of it because I was scared. I know you had no intention of harm. Your seriousness in expelling the being supports all of your claims. Uh huh. Can you tell me more about your duration with it? I only had it for a week, I think, and 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 I feel like I was tricked or I wasn't myself when I reached out. Because I'm always good at keeping myself out of danger, but its voice was just so beautiful. I felt like I had to reach out and no wasn't an answer. I was so sick all the time and it was so hungry. I lost my appetite but it, did, it didn't. Oh no. It wanted to eat non-stop so it could rebuild itself and... Well, yeah, it needs to grow. Bloom. Could you elaborate on this blooming concept? 
it didn't tell me. I tried to ask it so many times, but but it kept dancing around the question. It just said blooming was a beautiful thing and that I shouldn't be scared of it. Son about right? I, I couldn't shake the feelings I will die if it bloomed, so I threw it up in a model's dumpster. Do you remember the name of this mod hall? No, no, it was really late and its sign was half broken. I just... I wanted to go home and sleep. I started hungry and it felt like I passed out at any second. I... I think it, I talked to someone there, a worker maybe, I don't really remember. Do you think... Was, I, was it that guy? The new killer? Do you think that worker is... Maybe not? Because we are not. I'm sorry, I'm not at liberty to tell you otherwise. Oh, right. What did you mean about the beauty of this creature, creature's voice? Why were you unable to look away from, from it? I don't really know how to explain it. You really do have to be there yourself to properly understand, but it's like... Its voice is in your head. When it talks to you, it... It doesn't go through your ears. You're already thinking over what it's telling you. The more I listen, the more I, I fell to its trap. When I say it out like, like this, I know how spineless I sound, but when I was there, I... I felt like I was connected to it. I was like... It was like it was a part of me. When something talking to your mind and telling you how much... Uh, sorry, uh, uh, oof, that was a cough. You need it. You just... You listen. You have to. And by the time you realize what's happened, it's already in your brain. I see. I see. You don't believe me, do you? Don't take my son's just dope, Miss Choi. I want to hear as much as you're willing to share. I would just like to thank you again for your cooperation. You've been a tremendous help. Please don't tell me that our Peyton about this. I mean, they don't know about any of it, and I, I don't want to worry them. I understand. This conversation will stay entirely between the two of us. I just wish I... Interesting. This file is corrupted and cannot be opened. Recovering voice memo. Voice memory cover. Playing. Ah, okay, wait, uh, give me a moment to recover myself a bit. After speaking to Miss Choi for the rest of our altar time, I've come to learn a lot more about this flowering being that could prove fruitful in my investigation. Despite that, I am left with more questions than I had started with. Miss Choi's testimony aligns with what I've gathered so far, including her mention of the restful night model. So I have yet to receive the security footage I requested from its owner. I believe I have already questioned the worker she had mentioned. A strange fellow by the name of Damien Zhao, their manner of speaking was... crude to say the least. Regardless, I have no reason to believe their interaction with her or the being extended beyond what Miss Choi remembered. Quite frankly, this case is far beyond my usual realm of expertise. I do not deal in the realms of flower god or extraterrestrial beings. I specialize in demonic and unholy forces. <laughs> Wait, what? That is, that's, those are different things? The entities that lurks below or feet, not above. Ah, I see. Once again, I find my air directed towards our dear mayor, Edgar Hawthorne. God forbid he is the Kingsfield Police Department. Why should he use or tax lawyer for their intended purpose when he can hand the case off directly to me? They rather lay his pocket than let me carry out my intended job. I clearly don't have enough to deal with as of late, of course. Irving, huh? That being said, I simply cannot turn my back and let the authorities handle it. If nothing else, Miss Choi's testimony has resonated with me in a way that many other cases simply fail to replicate. Perhaps it was the guilt in her voice while recollecting her memories of the being. The way she spoke of its allure reminds me of when I was humans and fell to, li to the liar's deceit. I know her shame all too well. You once human, what? 
Knowing the incompetence of King's Will Detective's mystery testimony will be simply swept under the rug. Their encounter will become part of another statistic. Thus, I find myself once again consuming my entirety by an otherworldly being. But makes no mistake. I am not doing this for our mayor, nor I am partaking in this investigation to read the serial killer, killer that will stain Kingsville's reputation. This is entirely for Miss Choi. Ah, huh, that's very nice of you. I think you will be an of memo. You will be much more... Crude person? Not crude. Evil person? Yeah. Interesting. Beauty and rot, rot and beauty. There's a few things that we could explore still, and I'm interested to do that. Maybe chapter 2, because chapter 1 feels... I did a quick glance and feels the same. About chapter, chapter 2, though, I wonder. Oh, wait, we can see... Very gorgeous illustration that appeared in the game. Yeah, they are gorgeous. How do I scroll down? Wait, did I get them all? Really? I think I... Wait a minute, let me check the game page, BRB. Okay, you know what? I don't think we can unlock that scene. I will, I will, I will try to investigate further if I can unlock that scene or not. But probably we won't. So let's get to reviewing the game first, shall we? It's... It's nice. I, I love it. Like I already said in chapter... The previous episode in chapter one, it's it feels really cinematic. The sound design, the way everything is portrayed and shown, is just amazing. I love it. Uh, what do you call it? The character is also interesting. Like, yeah, the the personality of the characters are also interesting. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, yeah, I absolutely adore the comic book style of everything, like just popping out and stuff like that. It's cool. Uh, but probably a few things that I would have note is there's no rollback options, which usually is available in Rampy, and it's a perfect match for a game with a lot of choices like this, especially if the choices, some of the choices actually didn't really, what do you call it? Okay, what I'm trying to say is the game will definitely benefit from having a rollback options, the ability to go back to the previous dialogue or choices so you can pick another one because I don't think, uh, at least from my uh, perspective, that this game is trying to do something like your choices are permanent and you cannot change everything and the decisions you make in the games are very real and stuff like that. I don't think they're trying to do that here, but we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. And also, what else? Uh, probably the performance is kind of weird, like it feels unoptimized sometimes, like I feel I, I can see spikes and stuff like that, like it, like like spikes and I was like a little bit confused of why it is, uh, it, it can be my machine, but I just hope it's much more, what do you call it, smooth, optimized. Other than that, there's nothing much other than that minor thing at the end with a little uh, item listing from what I assume to be a RPG maker, but that's also fine by me. Like, it's not a big, uh, big flaw. So everything I s say is just like small or really, really minor flaws. In a way, yeah, that's all I could say about the game. I really enjoy it. So maybe see you later then in the full version of the game. Damien? And who? Uh, Skyder? I, I, I forget your name already. <laughs> Bye-bye. Beauty and rot, rot and beauty.